Good morning for the next few seconds until it clicks over. There you go. Good afternoon. How is it? Hope you're all well. I thought, yeah, let's just get rid of that. Uh, let's get there. I thought we'd try this channel. See what happens. See if it gets out there. See who starts watching. If anybody starts sharing and sort of what the engagement is. Firstly, freedom of speech. Let me set up a bit because otherwise we get a stripe across your face. Um, we never had it. Well, not as long as I've been alive anyway, I don't think. Um, I think we've had freedom of expression, which is nearly as ambiguous as this new bullshit um, Scotland's new hate speech laws, which will only go after the small people from what I can understand. Um, so JK Rowling, because she has such a massive impact worldwide, um, she won't get done. But I don't know, people like you and me, yeah, you could get really hammered. But not just yet, because there's a lot of people in the first few hours, I think thousands, three something of a thousand uh they went and reported a hate crime and i think most of it was from hamza yusuf so uh well done for coming out of that spectacular home goal there me old china well actually not me old china i'd have nothing to do with you personally i think you're a cunt but that's just me and if you're offended by that good so let's move on what have we got here uh scotland's tories are at crossroads with hate crime act okay how did they come into this and i will ramble on about this but we also had an interesting topic of conversation about the connection between Larry Silverstein, the Twin Towers, and the Baltimore Bridge. Um, maybe later I'll sign up. Right, Scotland's Tories are at a crossroads with the Hate Crime Act. Good, fine. Um, well, the Hate Crime Act is up and running, and over the next few weeks and months, Scotland will find out just how, like North Korea, they have become. Uh, not everyone is taking this line down. Scottish Family Party, SFP, uh, member Niall Fraser, an activist, the Glasgow cabbie marked the momentous day with a funeral for free speech ceremony complete with coffin. And that was outside the Scottish Parliament. Meanwhile, J.K. Rowling has been defying the police to arrest her, or defy, uh, yeah, defying the police to arrest her for her gender critical views and stand-up comic author and GB News presenter Andrew Dahl is promising a comedy unleashed event with anti-woke comedians daring the police to shut them down. Brave. This print's fucking small, by the way, and I haven't got my glasses on. Uh, what is striking about the protests in the distinct absence of any representation from the ranks of Scottish Conservatives? Rowling has donated to the Labour Party. Oh, my dear. She's a lefty, though. While Andrew Doyle is a left winger who's supposed to or support Jeremy Corbyn. So the left are coming out uh, because they realize that actually they can't um, get away with any more than the right. And this is going to hit them just as hard. And maybe some of those jokes that they said in the past is actually going to come back and bite them right in the hoop. Basically, um, when you've got a totalitarian government or a state or whatever, it doesn't um, differentiate between left and right anymore it's just you all do as you're told kind of thing so they uh, um uh, while they could probably be described as a social conservatives are fiercely critical of the capital letter variety uh, even nationalists are making more noise than the tories veteran smp politician jim sillers is trying to launch a repeal to the hate crime act uh best-selling author val mcdermid i believe who has spoken out strongly against the act of the SNP supporter and Nicola Sturgeon's bestie. So we can safely say that it's not going well there. 81 people watching. There you go. Um, so what do you think? Uh, let's have a bit of interaction in the comments. Do you think that this is basically to stop people being mean to people who are transgender and people who are weak that need protecting? Or do you think it's more a case that it's just building up laws so that when you start to criticize whatever they do, as long as you put something like I'm anti uh, men in the women's or I'm anti the Islamification of this country or I'm anti immigration, that that's more about what it's set up for and that it'll just stop any sort of, what's the word pushback against the takeover by Islam and its totalitarianism in Scotland. Uh, blaspheme law, yeah. Yeah, basically, you can't say anything about the Prophet Muhammad. Well, I can, because I don't give a fuck. I mean, when you want to marry a kid, you you know what you are. Um, 
and anybody who supports that, as they did down Speaker's Corner, when somebody was asked, if somebody, uh, or say, for instance, the prophet were to marry your daughter at the age of nine, would you let him? And this bloke went, uh, uh, and <clears throat> as I recall, the man who asked it was uh, Bob the Builder. And Bob the Builder said, well, there's your exact problem. The very fact that you've taken so long to even come out with an excuse rather than say clearly no shows the flaws in your ideology and your beliefs, which they do. So there you go. Uh, sadly, fact doesn't care. Well, yeah, that's the thing. See, I don't care about people's feelings because they're irrelevant. You know, if your feelings are so delicate and so easily to offend, then many of you want to grow the fuck up. That's just, that's where we are. Um, if your feelings want to support, say, for instance, kids having their bits chopped off or having themselves adjusted at a very young age because it suits your woke agenda, then I'm here to hurt your feelings, okay? If your feelings think that uh, an old man marrying a nine-year-old is normal, then I'm here to hurt your feelings. You know what I mean? If your feelings believe that, I don't know, that we should lower the age of sexual consent down to 10, then I'm going to call you a nonce and hurt your feelings. That's where we are. Because when this you can't say anything or you're going to get nicked thing came about, and most people shit themselves, I went the other way. I went, well, this will never stop. So don't start. Do not start following most of what they say. Get onto it. Fucking take the piss out of it. Point out the stupidity in it. And eventually when they do come for you, at least you've had one, two, three, ten years of saying whatever the fuck you like and um, not having to be a coward. The other thing is as well that all the time you're saying exactly what you think, like I do, you gain a lot of followers and subscribers and you'll get to a stage where it's harder to take you down. So it does have that. Uh, give an inch, take a mile. Give them an inch of rope. They want to be a cowboy. That's where it is. Um, what have we got? We've got 97 people watching. We're not doing bad here. Um, what other stories have we got? Uh, ben Bradley slammed for using an attack lines from the far right. <laughs> yes. Tory. I hate that term, Tory, but anyway. And I'm not a conservative, by the way. Tory MP, Ben Bradley. Oh, yeah, this was written by uh, Left Foot Forward. So we're going to get a very slanted approach on this, I should imagine. Uh, Tory MP, Ben Bradley, slammed for using attack lines from the far right. Okay, uh, anything that doesn't go along with their agenda is far right, just so you know. Um, unless you're asking for the hammer and sickle to power forward and take over and take all of your, um, your, your property and everything off you and you'll all be a very good comrade, then, yeah, you're probably far right. Tory MP Ben Bradley has been slammed for his latest political broadcast video in which he uses attack lines from the BNP. Were the BNP wrong? I think you'll find the BNP were calling what's happened now out many years ago. So just because it was easy to label them as far right and a bunch of racists, the groups and the individuals that have come after us after all these years are indeed racist themselves. So is it not protectionism? Is it not tribalism? Oh, yeah, we're not allowed to be like that, but everybody is. Fuck them anyway. We'll be what we want. Um, you're more likely, here we go, in the video, there are claims that this, uh, but this, this is it. Yes, in the video, Bradley attacks Labour councils for failing local residents before going on to claim that Labour-run councils, you're more likely to have to wait behind non-British nationals for housing, social housing. He's completely right. How many homeless people are you seeing on the streets at the moment? And how many pieces of shit are you seeing coming across the channel which fucking hate us and they're straight in a hotel? And they get to complain because they haven't got Wi-Fi and t TV in their room, perhaps. But yet yeah, the people that serve this country are now living in their own fucking squalor in a doorway somewhere whilst waiting to be beaten up by passers-by or robbed or moved on and maybe even given a fine for being homeless. That's another thing, isn't it? So his comments were condemned online with Alex Holmes, a Labour councillor from Ilford, posting on X, they're not just the nasty party. Yeah, because feelings in it. So if I come out with the truth that basically most of the Labour government want to suck on the cock of Islam because they'll get the votes there, am I being nasty? Or am I pointing out the facts? Am I saying that Labour councils have covered up lots and lots of rape by Islam, okay, because, well, they were going to lose votes if they didn't? Is that nasty? What about all those people that suffered rape from an ideology for up to 40 years? 
miserable. Some of them had to take their own lives because they couldn't handle the you know life after. Some of them had kids by these people and had them taken off. Some of them were pimped out to many other people, but these middle-class champagne socialist pieces of shit fucked them over as hard as possible just to suck on the cock of Islam because they know they vote on, on group. And who will Islam want in there? Well, somebody that's going to cover up all the atrocities that it's done whilst in this country. So, is that nasty? I hope so. Anyway, uh, so they said they're not just nasty uh, party. They are now sourcing their attacks from the BNP, who were right. Do you know what's going to be really funny in the future? Is when all these lefties have worked out that they were wrong, and they'll be screaming for us to protect them, yet still want to be in charge. At which time, we'll put them back in their box and say, never pop out of it again. You're fucking stupid. You're gullible. You'll fall for anything. And you're a danger to yourself and everybody else around you. And when you take away all of their perceived self-appointed power and they realize they're nothing again, oh, you won't believe. Jesus Christ, they'll be more likely to do something terrible to themselves, which nobody wants, than a person who's been through the operation and realizes it's changed fuck all, except some physical appearance. So, Bella Sankey, the Labour leader of Brighton and Hove Council, added, uh, BMP, what's it say? Invocation of the Conservative Party is complete. Fuck off, mate. At, seriously? You've got a few people within the Conservative Party that are saying some things that are half about, and you, you indoctrinated wank stain from Brighton and Hove. I've been there. I would rather fucking eat wasps than go to Brighton and Hove. Why? Because it's like worse than fucking Bristol. Seriously, there are so many low-life pieces of shit off their face on all sorts of drugs, graffitiing fucky out of out the place and then calling it art. The smell of fucking piss and lentils around there is awful. All right, and B.O. Fuck that. And not just that. You had hotels where kids were being taken out of by immigrants under your nose that you ignored because, hey, don't want to look racist, right? Don't worry about that, kid. It's only one. There's plenty more left. Wankers. So, uh, yeah, so it seems like uh, social media seems to be the place for the left to scream outrage and pearl clutch. Nobody cares. Nobody gives two fucks about your feelings anymore. Nothing. Oh, look, 125 people. I couldn't see the screen for a while, by the way, because I was reading that stuff. So, is this spicy enough for you? <laughs> God fucking, I'm past the point of giving a shit anymore. And do you know what? If they came for me, I'd be like a little martyr. They would actually do more good to me than they would bad. Right. Brighton is the leftist heart of darkness. You're not fucking wrong there. These laws are hateful. Yep. Rainbow City. I got fucking itchy nose. I'll tell you. Uh, the Sheerness Council meeting has been cancelled on Thursday. <laughs> uh what do we got letting it float yes i'm 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 checking my what is it the fucking yin and yang and my chakras or whatever all that bollocks i don't fucking know i'm just getting off my plate so that was that oh uh, yeah welcome welcome <laughs> fucking this is another absolute shite uh what do i want uh just get rid of that so i'll put that over there so i can come back to you and, and, and read what you're saying he says, disbelief at sad state of affairs as police are brought into schools to teach 13-year-olds how to treat stab wounds and gunshot wounds. In my days, it was the cycling proficiency and how to have lights on your fucking bike when you went out and to make sure you didn't ride on the pavement. Uh, hey, how life's changed for the best. Hey, diversity is our strength and all that. Oh, yeah, that's right. What's the point in teaching people about lights on their bike when their bike's already been fucking nicked? I'm fucking believable. As I was saying, I will never be approached by any of these fringe political parties. Why? Because I'm too fucking gobby. Um, children aged 13 are being taught how to treat stab and gunshot wounds. This is what we learned, right, when we did our door-like course to make sure that if, say, for instance, by the way, if you ever find somebody that has a knife in them, do not take it out. All right, you leave it there until the paramedics get there. And we were taught, but it could be different now, so you probably have to go to the police. Or you could learn off a 13-year-old at one of these schools, because I'm sure they now know. 
what we used to do is put a cloth around where the knife is and hold that there, stop the blood coming out, and uh, yeah, wait till the fucking the services arrive. But yeah, the extraordinary class has been taught to nine pupils uh, in at least one inner city London academy school uh, of London police officers. That's brilliant. It coincides with the rise in violent knife crime in the capital, which has seen young people targeted by gangs most recently on Easter Monday. Here's the thing. When you, um, when you invite into your country, um, the third world, which knife each other uh, a lot of the time because, well, life over there is has no value in many places. Not all, but in many places where these people are coming, there is no value to life. Um, and obviously they don't have the policing technology that we do to catch um, nasty people on Twitter or right-wingers. Sorry, I meant to say criminals. Um, but yeah, when you invite them in, that's what you're going to get. And also when you've got a demographic change, you will see what happens when any particular demographic that's particularly known when they're in groups, what they're going to do with each other, concentrate. And then you'll also see racist attacks. Now, when I was a kid, when I was 18, I remember there was a, a guy who got stabbed to death by a load of whites. And it was a massive court case, and his mother went on to be a dame. She rinsed the fuck out of that, actually, if I'm honest. Um, it actually caused the split up of her and her husband, as it was. But um, his was a perceived racist attack, and... I have to say that the the optics weren't very good because um, these boys were scrapping with people. I don't know whether they were cameraman or what, but going to trial. Um, and it was a massive thing. And everybody was made, made to feel bad. And I think there was, oh, my facial hair's killing me today. And Damiota Taylor, that was another one, stabbed to death, um, and so and so on. But nowadays, you're more likely to get stabbed black on black or black on white. Uh, less likely to be white on black. Sorry if that offends you, but hey, look at the statistics, take the facts, look at the facts, what they are, and then work out where we're going wrong. Um, not just that, I'd like to see these kids, any of them that are caught, right, with a knife, to be put into the sort of prison where it breaks their spirit. Some of them, obviously, are not going to make it. My heart bleeds purple piss, because you're no fucking good to anybody on the out. So I'd like to see them go in and break rocks and really have their spirit shad. So when they come out, they're not all full of that. <clears throat> but I'd also <clears throat> like to see kids in inner cities encouraged to go into a military that was changed before they get into it. So it's not all about your feelings. So it's not all about the what gender am I? So it's not all about I've got a bit of depression today. I can't handle it. None of that shit. And you get somebody like, what's his name? Fucking... <laughs> Gunnery Sergeant, whatever his shot was, I can't remember his name, but you know the one shouting at the fuckers? Uh, can you imagine the first one that says, I ain't fucking doing it, and just gets, like, you know, I can't say it on here, but you get the idea. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Alex, I'm going to, it says here, sorry, you're on fire, you're very best. I'm expecting a knock, but fuck it. 138 people tuned in to Pure Racism. No, it's not, it's common sense, actually, if you're watching from the left. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to educate our kids of how to be victims and how to treat victims. That's quite impressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was it. Second World War, we took people off the streets, and within a matter of weeks, we taught them, taught them how to be fighting soldiers. Could we not teach these kids how to spot danger, maybe, and stay away from all that shit and avoid these gangs and just leave these fucking out-of-control psychopaths to go and do each other? rather than get involved. I suppose it's not so easy as that. There it is. What else have we got? Have we got anything else? <laughs> yeah. The last story. Botswana. Threatened to send 20,000 elephants to Germany. I haven't actually read this yet, but it sounded quite funny. So, Botswana threatens to send 20,000 elephants to Germany. What, because the immigrants weren't bad enough, right? Um, President of Botswana has threatened to send 20,000 elephants to Germany in a dispute over conservation. Earlier this year, German environmental ministers suggest that there should be stricter limits on importing trophies from hunting animals. Botswana president, whatever his fucking name is, I can't be asked to pronounce it, told German media this would only impoverish people in his country. So 
yeah, when you make huge sums of money out of chopping off the uh, tusks of innocent elephants, and then any normal country says, well, we don't want to do that. So then you want to send the entire elephant over to Germany. Maybe it might not be a bad idea. Put these elephants out in the streets, right? Put them in ivies. I mean, you know, give them a job. But yeah, you could put them out in the streets at night. Maybe get all the thugs off the street. What do you reckon? I'd like to see some bloke out there with his little flick knife try and take on fucking an elephant. The elephant's going to sort that out. No problem, isn't it? We could actually call them police sergeants. Well, not sergeants, but just police officers. You've heard of police dogs. What about police elephants? 20,000 of those walking around the city centre, disciplining all these out. Yeah, it could work. I don't know you're going to get them back in the cage in the morning, but good luck. I'm taking the piss, by the way. Anyway, he said, uh, he said the elephant numbers had exploded as a result of conservation efforts and hunting elephants uh, helping keep them in check. Okay. Germans should live together with the animals in a way you are trying to tell us to. Mr. Nzzi, I think it is, told German newspapers. Uh, this is a joke. Botswana is a home to, uh, the th uh, to about a third of the world's elephant population, over 130,000. That's good, isn't it? Um, more than it has space for. Really? Herds were causing damage to property, eating crops and trampling residents, Mr. Whatever his chop says. Okay, let's look at this seriously then. If you're going to kill these elephants because their population is too much, not the fact that you've actually built on their land and taken it off them, if you're going to do that, are you going to use the whole elephant for food? Or is it just the trunk? Let's see what the Green Party got to say about this. It'd be interesting. But anyway, yeah, no, if I mean, 130,000, I don't know how big Botswana is. I've got to be honest. How many were there before the ivory thing? Because there were a lot of elephants killed due to the ivory trade, and there was a lot of money in it. No, I don't think we should kill elephants. I don't like that idea. Anyway, that is some stories. I thought I'd see how many people came in because obviously this is my lesser known channel. Um, it could live with our horses. <laughs> Let's go back through some of the comments and see what we got. Oh yeah, that was it. The Larry Still Silverstein connection. Now Larry Silverstein um, went and bought the Twin Towers shortly before they were um, adjusted by allegedly um, Saddam, not Saddam, what the fuck was his name? Bin Laden and his firm which is an interesting concept. Um, but anyway, they were absolutely rampacked full of asbestos and every floor was going to need to be uh, cleaned of his asbestos. They reckoned it was between 150 and 300,000 pounds per floor. Also, many of those um, levels were part occupied or not occupied at all because over the years it had become harder to heat and harder to cool. So it wasn't quite the fashionable place to put your office these days. Anyway, um, it seems that Silverstein, um, a man that hasn't really failed on a business deal, took on this elephant. And then shortly after, one day he decides not to go in. And the exact level that he would have been on with the rest of his colleagues gets hit by a plane. Imagine that. Anyway, luckily, he managed to get it insured properly against terrorism, as I've been informed by Brother Beatings. The uh, insurance was part of stipulated after, allegedly, well, it was attacked years prior to that, and it was allegedly by, yeah, again, Bin Laden's firm, as far as I'm aware. But anyway, turns out he made a few quid out of that. Well, uh, there's another allegedly at the moment. That there's a connection from Silverstein to the bridge, and somebody saying that he's already made a claim of a million. I don't know about that. But I did look into who owns the bridge and stuff. Now, there is some saying that, um, Lockheed Martin have something to do with the tolls. I can't understand why they would, but then I looked into who owns Lockheed Martin and it was BlackRock and many other beautiful little companies like that. The companies that have a massive input on um, the direction of huge companies and their wokeism and what they push, the agendas, etc. cetera. So, um, yeah, I thought it was quite a nice connection, but I can't get to the bottom of it and conspiracy theories will come up. Now, that big flash, um, I would suggest, was probably the electrical cables that go across that bridge. Because if you know anybody that's ever driven a digger and chopped into a 3 kV cable and is still alive, 
he'll tell you that they make quite a flash. Uh, just seeing you are on, Simon. Yeah, I'm a bit... I haven't got long to go because I've got to get into town and, and try and get into a bank, believe it or not. I haven't done that for years, so it should be interesting. So, BlackRock, you say, imagine my shock. Well, quite. Yeah. Um, BlackRock, they seem to have connections to huge companies that do damage spiritually as much as anything else. Uh, BlackRock's got his fingers into everything. I haven't had my fingers in anything lately for a long time. Lately for a long time. That's not common sense. Anyway, what else have we got? Let's go through the comments because I'm going to wind it up in a minute. Um, Bad Lads Army. Yeah. Uh, trans. Uh, so the blaspheme law, what do you reckon? How long do you reckon it's going to be before old that Hamza Yusuf tries to get that one in up there? I'm trying to work out any any Scottish person going along with this, how they could have gone along with it, and moreover, what they actually think of their country. Could I can't imagine anybody thinking this could have possibly been a good thing. I mean, why is it hate? Is it not common sense or just dislike? Or I want to keep my people away from what I perceive to be unhealthy for them. Because it's not, in my view, the government to tell me what it thinks is good for me. I don't like that. That's overbearing. I certainly don't like a government telling me that I have to go along with whatever it says, whatever, when I know it's completely wrong, immoral, against my religious beliefs, and unjust, right? I don't believe that that's right. Now, if a government tells me that I should follow the rules of the road, it's telling me that to stop, try and stop me getting killed or killing others. I kind of get that, although I have broken a few of those laws when I was younger. But if it tells me I have to accept somebody um, telling me that they now identify as a Massey Ferguson tractor, or, if, I don't know, they see themselves as a fucking impact screwdriver or whatever, I'm not going to go along with it because they very clearly aren't. See where I am. And I expect most of you are probably like this. Oh, peachy, late. Late. See me after. Right. Uh, you know, most of the Scots would just laugh at the hate laws. I'd imagine they would, common sense and all that. Simon, the trolls could be because Lockheed owns the cameras and the computers. Yeah, now, I'm, I've heard that some of the footage, was it on board the ship? Um, that records what the ship's doing. Uh, they've lost a few minutes of it. Yeah. Can you imagine? Uh, what have we got here? Steve Laws. Ah, Steve. Hello. How are you? I see you've been busy lately and people have been talking. <laughs> uh, yeah. At one time, you're going to have to uh, uh, have a chat at some point. So catch up, see where you are, that kind of thing. Uh, what have we got? Uh, yes. Yes, Peachy. You can say sorry. If I was late to one of your classes, what's the punishment? Actually, I probably don't want to know. Probably have to write my name fucking 700 times or whatever. Uh, any other comments before I decide to wrap this one up? Um, because I think I've compressed the anger into a more uh, concentrated version this time. Um, let's go right back. So I do believe wrong people are prioritized. Just going to ask, right? Forget the fact whether you're religious or atheist. Do you believe that evil people are in charge of the world at the moment? One, if you do. Two, if you don't. Jet, marry me. Jet. What sort of jet are you, love? <laughs> Just want to know. Now, if you're the jet of gladiators, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. What have we got here? Fuck me, we got some ones. Many ones, yes. One, 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 one. Hi, Simon, one. Cheers. Luke Mick, one. You're pretty sure on that, Luke Mick. One, 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 one. Uh, okay. Do you believe that we can win the fight against this evil? Three if you do, four if you don't. I like these interactions. All right. Uh, fuck me. Alan, you were pretty sure that we can't. 
Um, okay. We've got a few people that think that we can win. Alan still believes we can't. Uh, Auntie Vac. Auntie. Very clever. Um, <laughs> Right, so it is quite a mix at the moment. There's a few of you that think we can't, and a few of you that think we can. Um, remember, anything is possible. If you'd have asked people 300 years ago whether the Wright brothers would get their plane off the deck, I was thinking today, as I had this phone in my hand and talking to the Banhammer, Banhammer, that when we watched Star Trek years ago, and he went, and then said whatever he said, and that thing went away. And we all thought, can you imagine if that ever happened? And here we are now, married to the things. Some people with, you know, that uh, dopamine rush when they, they get notified, that are so addicted to it that the phone has to go everywhere and they get anxiety if their phone's fucked. Um, yeah. So when we look at the situation that we're in now, I think that nothing's fixable and nothing's changeable. We couldn't conceive that we would be doing the things that we're doing now, or let alone we couldn't have even conceived that that I would have to call a man a, a woman, which I won't, or vice versa, or any of those other stupid things. So is it conceivable that even though we can't see it now, that things could change for the, for the better? We've got to go through the worst period first, but I think that you should look into, if you get the chance, the looking glass thing, where they all went along, with these different experiments that the scientists went through to see that was there uh, or were they always going to be in a position of power and could they control the masses? And I think that every experiment they told or went through sooner or later came back as you will lose control. And I think personally that it was after that, that they decided that if we can't have it, destroy it. Fancy that. If I can't take my ball with me, I'll put a knife through the fucking thing. It's pretty much where we are in it. Ask Dave the plant. Dave's fucking huge. Dave has been growing. And if I turn him sideways, hang on a second. A little bit of Dave interaction there, bear with. Oh. I think we're pissed, but oh well, it wouldn't be the first time on here now, would it? Oh. Hey, sexy Dave. <laughs> Not happy about this. Dave gets all the fucking women's attention. Bastard. Bastard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wonder if this could be done. <laughs> Dave, you're a bastard. Yeah, I am. Worth a try. <laughs> so anyway, there it is. Right, well, if you're not obviously subscribed to the channel, which you should be, but if you're not, subscribe. Um, tell your friends about this channel. I have a feeling that at some point I may lose the other one. Or I may lose the ability to live stream out of the one in the middle, which is Rev on a Rant, which is gaining subs, by the way. Turns out, I thought I had 12,000. I've got 13,000 some odd on there. So, yeah, Japanese J tree. I have one. She's called Davina. Dave, apparently you could be a bird, not just a Joe. Shotaku. Don't these things come from India, which means he's a fucking immigrant. And look at him, sat there in the best position, not working. Imagine my fucking shock. Who is Dave on roids? No, Dave is just, and this is the thing. Dave is about to get grabbed out of there at some point and put in a bigger pot. And you mark my words, he will grow that much in width on either side and around the top this year, which will make him take up a lot of that window. He's fucking huge. And I'm actually going to have to think about, um, will that table take the weight of Dave when he gets much bigger? I don't know this. Maybe you lot will. 
Um, Jade Tree. <laughs> Dave, is your name Jade? I'm probably going to get him kick off later on. So there it is. Right. Hi, Simon. How long do you think it will take before they actually come for you and arrest you like Tommy? I think really what they want me to do to really justify Nick and me is actually go out, do protests and speak at them. I think they consider this harmless because they can just turn turn the taps off. Just that'll be it. Whenever that suits them, they just fucking finish me off by getting rid of my channel. But if you're a public speaker, well, then they've got to start stopping you being able to go to these places. Yeah, that's my understanding of it. I mean, if you look at anybody who's gone out and gone on these, I don't know, you call it a protest, demonstration, whatever it is, and actually speak, they generally go after them more. And I have to be honest, um, I spoke once before. Uh, let's see if I can get a picture. And I have to say, I found it the most terrifying thing I have ever fucking done. One minute, let's get a picture up. Uh, where do we go? That'll do. Dum, dum, dum. I'll move that over there. Now, what you don't know, where is it? Present. There's a picture. Share. Not very good at this. Window there. I was shaking from my head to my feet. My legs were going and everything. I was fucking terrified. But I did it. But yeah, scary. Fucking scary. Um, we just managed to get the stage back because the the police had tried to confiscate the stage from us or from them, and we all pitched in. And uh, we got it back. And so I then ridiculed the police and called them all the names under the sun. But uh, if YouTube smile smites you, you can live stream on Dave's channel. Yes. I tell you, if I lost all my channels, I would piggyback on other people's. And yes, I would then go out on the street and be a street activist. I'm not going to go away. I'm not going to stop. Did you know still? Um, but it is what it is, isn't it? What have we got? Any more questions? All right. Yeah. What's with the recent protest of not having the union flag in political pamphlets? The ethnic community seem to hate all things. Well, it's obvious. If they're trying to get rid of this being Great Britain or English, right? Okay. Then they slowly have to ban all sort of indications or things that celebrate that. Don't forget you've got Islam, whose intention is to take over this country. And the left, who A, want to facilitate them, and B, despise everything about the country. The left hate this country as much as they, in often times, hate their parents. They just hate the hand that feeds them because they're spoiled, bitter, twisted, ungrateful, mentally ill, fuckwits. Not all of them, some of them. Um, and these are the people that will go to their enemy and help them. Do you remember when you had a gang and there was another opposite gang and you always had that kitty in the gang that was a square peg in a round hole. And he'd be with you for a while, and then he'd fuck off to the other gang to try and tell him everything that he knew. Yeah? That's the left. All right? So, one second. Let's have a quick look for the comments. I was telling two young men about Iran yesterday and how it looked. It was what it... Yeah, how it was a beautiful country, and it was known as the metropolitan um, part of the Middle East, I believe. Um, I have a YouTube dry spell, just unsure what to cover at the moment. It's been over a, a week on either channel. It might be a case of just do something so that they can hear your voice. No, you're not gone away. Know that you haven't given up because obviously you haven't, but it might be more satisfying to them to just hear from you. Um, uh, what else we got? Channel 4 is a new program, hit piece on the so-called far right. I was hearing about that today. Um, the best thing that they could do is turn off the internet. Yeah, because everybody would then go out. They want to ban Scottishness and make it a hate crime. Of course they do. Um, how come you don't stream on your Rumble channel simultaneously with YouTube? Because every time I tried to do it, it won't let me. Simple. I need somebody who's more technically minded than me. Um, what about going to another platform with Sai? We will come with you. 
Um, all right. What's narcissistic? I've just got narcissistic, that's all. Um, doo -doo -doo. Long and short is that the far right, or the, or, the, or the fight against the far right, sorry, Al, didn't read your pro. Uh, those 70s photos of Iraq, Iran, Syria, and Lebanon, an eye-opener. Yeah, because some of them women were fucking sexy, mate. Uh, the leftoids. Right, I got you. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> Uh, women in Iraq being killed over... Yeah, exactly. Why would you want to... Some of the women are really pretty. Why the fuck do you want to cover their face? I mean, it's a gift, isn't it? You know, a really pretty woman walking down the road, you're like, oh, lovely, lovely. Absolutely, you know. Yeah, but beyond, yeah, I have. Right, if you've run out of steam, then get a few mates on, all right? Start talking, and things will happen, all right? Maybe even do a call-in. Um, the call-in works, obviously, you know, the more people you get on. I mean, we've got 178 here unannounced on a channel I very, very rarely use at 12 o'clock on a Wednesday, is it, or Thursday? I can't remember which day it is. So, yeah, anything's possible. Anyway, <laughs> all right, Mick, I got you. Anyway, I'm going to wind this one up now because I've got to go and do in real life stuff. Um, and there it is. Right. Thanks for joining me, and uh, I'll see you all in a bit.